Ibrahim Trao. Who is he, and why is he trending all over social media? Join me as I take you through the story of the youngest president in the world. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so, and don't forget to like and share. Early Life of Ibrahim Traor Ibrahim Traor, born in 1988, is a Burkina Bay military officer who has been the interim leader of Burkina Faso since the September 30, 2022 coup d'etat that ousted interim president Paul Henri Sandaogo Damiba. At the age of 34, Traor is currently the youngest serving president in the world. After receiving his primary education in Bondokui, he attended a high school in Bobo Diulasso, where he became known as being quiet and very talented. In 2006, he studied at the University of Ouagadougou, where he was part of the Association of Muslim Students. He graduated from the university with honors. Traor joined the army of Burkina Faso in 2009. He was sent to Morocco for anti-aircraft training before being transferred to an infantry unit in Kaya, a town in Burkina Faso's north. Promoted to lieutenant in 2014, Traor joined MINUSMA, a United Nations peacekeeping force involved in the Mali War. In 2018, he was cited as one of the MINUSMA soldiers who showed courage during major rebel attacks in the Tombuctu region. He subsequently returned to Burkina Faso, where he assisted in operations against the escalating jihadist insurgency. Traor fought in the Otapuanu Offensive of 2019 and several other counterinsurgency operations in the country's north. He was promoted to captain in 2020. Rise to Power Traor was part of the group of army officers that supported the January 2022 Burkina Faso coup d'etat and brought the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration military junta to power. From March 2022 to March 2023, he served as the head of an artillery regiment in Kaya. Many supporters of the January coup became dissatisfied with the performance of Paul Henry Sandaogo Damiba, the junta's leader, regarding his inability to contain the jihadist insurgency. Traor later claimed that he and other officers had tried to get Damiba to refocus on the rebellion but eventually opted to overthrow him, as his ambitions were diverting away from what we set out to do. The dissatisfaction about the situation was highest among younger officers who fought against the rebels on the front lines. In addition, there were delays in pay for the Cobra troops. When the plotters launched their coup on September 30th, Traor still held the rank of captain. The operation was carried out with the support of the Cobra unit. In the immediate aftermath of the coup, Traor declared himself the new head of the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration. On October 6th, he also assumed the position of interim president as head of state, supreme head of the armed forces. He promises to hold democratic elections in July 2024. Why is Traor going viral and captivating the world's attention? His shine began on July 20, 2023, when he accompanied 16 other African heads of state to St. Petersburg, Russia, for a meeting with President Vladimir Putin, who had organized the Russia-Africa summit. His fellow presidents were dressed in their characteristic custom-tailored, expensive suits. But the towering Traor, who is slightly above six feet in height, showed up in military combat clothing, complete with a red beret and tactical gloves. While walking past the security officers who were saluting the arriving heads of state at the summit's venue, Expo Forum, Traor was one of the few, if not the only, visiting president who saluted back. If that did not appeal to the world's optics, his muscular physique and unique presence, even in Putin's proximity, did when he posed for a photograph with the Russian leader. The saluting, the picture with Putin, and the dress code earned him attention. But his speech during the Russia-Africa summit, held between July 27th and 28th, earned him plaudits. The problem is seeing African heads of state 
who bring nothing to people who are struggling, singing the same song as the imperialists who call us a militia. As a result, they end up referring to us as people who do not respect human rights, Troas said. We, African heads of state, must stop acting like marionettes who dance each time the imperialists pull on our strings. He went ahead to blast African presidents who are happy to receive freebies. Yesterday, July 27th, President Vladimir Putin announced that free grain would be shipped to Africa. This is pleasing, and we say thank you for it. However, this is also a message to our African heads of state. At the next forum, we must not come here without having ensured the self-sufficiency of the food supply for our people. We must learn from the experience of those who have succeeded in achieving this, Treor said. His speech earned him respect worldwide. He was fearless in addressing and speaking the truth, showing his fellow leaders they needed to look after their people.